The value of labour power is determined by the value of the necessaries of life habitually required by the average labourer. The quantity of these necessaries is known at any given epoch of a given society and can therefore be treated as a constant magnitude. What changes is the value of this quantity. This chapter mainly consists of Marx repeating some previous concepts that have been discussed throughout the book so far. However, a few interesting points are raised. The first notable thing in this chapter is that Marx begins to shift his language from the value of labour power to the price of labour power as a transition into the next part of the book that will begin to examine wages. If we remember back to chapter 3, where we first discussed price, we saw how it's only ever a monetary representation of value. And while Marx is assuming that price and value are equal for his analysis throughout capital, we are reminded here that this is not always the case in the real world. However, in continuing to assume that commodities, including labour power, are never sold below their value, Marx reminds us there are three factors that determine the relative magnitudes of surplus value and the price of labour power. The length of the working day, the intensity of labour and the productivity of labour. These three determining factors can be used by capitalists to decrease the value of labour power relatively to surplus value. Obviously they aren't just limited to using one of these at a time and so many varying combinations are possible of which Marx now details some. Increased productiveness and greater intensity of labour both have a like effect. They both augment the mass of articles produced in a given time. One of the more interesting points made, at least in my opinion, is that by increasing productivity or by increasing the length of the working day and the intensity with which labour perform, Marx notes that it is, at least hypothetically possible, that both the worker and capitalist both mutually gain a greater quantity of means of subsistence. Because due to the increased productivity, there could be more finished commodities to share between the capitalist and the working class. Or due to increased intensity or length of time labouring, workers would need an increasing excess over the normal amount to make up for their rapidly declining energy to reproduce their own labour power. Marx notes, however, that whatever this share would be, would be entirely dependent on the class antagonisms in play and whether they have the power to make such demands. This is particularly interesting, as it's essentially what Keynesian economics in the UK and Roosevelt's similar policies in the US were based around, a socially progressive capitalist development of tying wages to productivity. With the looming threat of the USSR, the capitalist class were more than happy to incorporate unions and worker demands within to capitalism. They were quite aware that increased profits can absolutely still happen with increased wages, and at the same time, pacify and defang workers' movements and their bargaining capacities. This is the type of economic policy that many leftists and social democrats seem to be obsessed with returning to, a small increase in the material gains for the working class, while at the same time increasing the intensity and time they spend working and disempowering their class power, all the while continuing to enrich the capitalist class.